Hello. Hello, guys. Just waiting for some people to pop in here. Hello. How we doing? So this is going to be a um, a Q and A. I'm going to do a little bit of update on our access issue that we had on the farm. So hang around for that. Um, go ahead and start asking questions if you'd like. Um, I'll start with the update on the access issue. So last I said, I believe I told you guys that I had a lawyer who was taking the case and they were going to, they were going to handle it. Um, that's still happening. Um, they they were waiting on some paralegals and uh to get hired so they could disperse kind of their cases they're backed up on cases so i got an email from my lawyer and he said the paralegal they had hired didn't work out so now they're trying to get another one in um everything else is still like a go we're just kind of waiting at this point still um i asked him if i could come into the law firm and do a video um you know ask them some questions and stuff so also if you guys have questions or would have questions for like the lawyers um either about the firm or something like that that's going on um you know what they handle things like that um you can comment that down below too and i will make a note about those questions am i okay what it's not time yet can you say hi people don't see you very often anymore hi sow What's going on? I'm okay. I'm pretty sure I'm okay. Say yeah, hi. Guys, this is Luna. Um, so if you guys have followed me for a long time, this is my retired service dog. Uh, right now, she's not alerting to me. She's not doing her normal alerts. This is her begging for her dinner because she is hungry. And it got dark outside, so she thinks it's time to eat, and it's not. She's going to eat for another hour. Um, no, she was not alerting. She's telling me she's hungry and she wants her food because it's dark outside. <clears throat> okay, so back to the law firm thing. Um, I did email and ask him if I could come in and do a video, um, ask some questions and things like that. And he said, absolutely, they want to set something up after Thanksgiving. So between Thanksgiving and Christmas is probably when I'll go in and do that. So watch out for that video. Um, as long as COVID restrictions allow it, right now our governor is saying put a mask on or I'm going to shut you down again. So I don't blame him for for doing that. I mean, COVID in my area has gotten really bad. That's also why I haven't been putting out videos, guys. Um, I'm, I'm just not going out. I'm at too much of a risk to go out and, and get COVID. So in my area in Ohio, we're... We're, we're pretty pretty bad right now. Um, so yeah, I will be hopefully going in and doing that as long as there aren't any restrictions and we're able to do so. Um, that way you guys can be informed on kind of the stuff that, like what I'm doing with the law, law firm, how I kind of work alongside them. I don't work for them, but I help bring them cases and things like that um, from the service dog community. So. Right now, I have people who kind of know what I'm doing that basically if they have an access issue somewhere or if they have an issue with um, anything involving their service dog and the general public, they are coming to me and saying, hey, this occurred. Um, I'd like to take some kind of action against it. Or do you know if this would be considered something that I could take an access or take action against? by either A, sending someone a letter, like a business a letter from a lawyer stating, hey, you've got to do this. If you don't, it will result in a lawsuit and you will have to pay. Uh, we don't want that to happen. So you need to do X, Y, and Z, educate your employees on X, Y, and Z type of thing. Um, which is what we always try to do first. Um, we, meaning the lawyer and I, we always try to uh, send a letter out first stating, hey, because we don't want to sue these people. It's not about the money. It's about the education. So, um, 
that's kind of happening and um, hopefully, you know, I'll get that worked out soon and we can get a video out kind of explaining what the law firm does, um, who they're there to help, things like that. So that's an update on that. Um, we haven't really gotten anything going yet. Still waiting on some paralegals, but uh, we're still taking action against that uh, farm that denied us access back in September. So it's just a long wait right now. Um, I mean, let me read through here, guys. Start asking your questions, and you can you can ask anything within reason as long as it's not like super personal. Like I will, I will probably answer it. Um, Alberta, we did not, I, your question was, have they allowed you to go? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, if you mean to that farm, no, we didn't go back after that day. We have not been back. Uh, we went to a different farm, which I did do a video on, um, but that was not the same farm. Wow. Um, Alberta, where are you located? Because that's, they said because of your service dog, you had to sit outside and wait. That's, that's unlawful. It just depends on where you're located, though. Oh, okay. Um. I have, I don't know anything about Canadian laws and, you know, what, as far as what, what's protected and what's not, beanies on sideways, as far as what's protected and what's not. Um, so. I need to, I need to brush up on my Canadian laws. Um, eventually we're hoping to take a trip up that way anyway. So my friends up there, Prince Edward Island area is where they're at though. Oh my goodness. You're the same as us as far as access. So they were denying you access. Um, I would contact your local, um, I don't know if you guys have like a Department of Justice type thing. I would definitely contact, you know, whatever is closest to either for your province or, um, you know, city even and see where you could go with that. Um, because that's, that's just wrong that they made you sit outside just because you have a service dog. That's not cool. I would, it's cold here, and I would literally flip my crap on somebody probably. Well, I wouldn't. I would try to educate them first, or I'd just be like, okay, I'm just going to another hospital. You know, you'll get a letter from my lawyer. No, 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 no. That's absolutely unacceptable making you sit outside it was probably i don't know when this happened but i'm guessing it was probably colder too if this was recent because that's that's just terrible that they would do something like that good questions guys keep those uh questions coming keep those questions coming um i don't hospitals in the u.s i mean three hours sounds like a long wait time probably for for someone up in, in Canada, because I know you guys have way better health care than we do. Um, but here in the States, it's not uncommon to wait three or four hours if you're not like a major emergency case. Um, although things have sped up here since COVID started, um, they try and get you in and out as quickly as possible. And there are only two hospitals in the Columbus or the surrounding area that I will go to. Um, one that's fairly close to me, um, unfortunately, there was a time where I almost needed to go by ambulance and they weren't taking patients there yet because it's a brand new hospital, <clears throat> but they weren't going to take me to the other one either because it was too far of a distance. So, oh, wow. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's not uncommon for, I mean, the longest I ever waited in the ER, I think, was six hours, and I had a migraine. I was in waiting in the ER overnight. I went there about, I want to say it was like 11 o'clock at night, and I didn't get out until after all everything was said and done, 
because they kept me like two hours. So I was there eight hours total. It was really early in the morning when I left. Oh my goodness. Questions, guys. Anything, go ahead. There's like seven of you in here. If you guys have questions about anything, let me know about Phoebe. Oh, also, I will um, let you guys know. I started to say this the other day when I was opening up a package. Uh, Phoebe graduated her program. So she is full service dog now. Yay. So she graduated. Um, she graduated last Tuesday or this past, yeah, this past Tuesday. Uh, what other kind of access issues have you had or found? Um, the only other major access issue I had was two years ago when I had Luna. Luna was w within the first, I want to say, year or so of her training. Um, we went to, this was back in 2018, we went to an urgent care local to me and it was for my wife my wife's back had been bothering her this was when she first started having back problems we had no idea what was going on um she went in to be seen and they would not allow me to go back with her so this is pre-covid they would not allow me to go back with her because of my dog and basically told me i had to wait outside because of my dog which at that time they could not do so um an email was sent um that was taken care of i haven't had any issues since um, but unfortunately, due to COVID, if I were to go with her to urgent care again, they would tell me I would have to wait outside. It's actually posted on the door, um, not because of my dog, and that's just that's just because of COVID. They can only have one person back at a time that is being seen. Um, other small ones I've had um, are usually at restaurants that are um, foreign owned. So I did have an issue with a restaurant down in Hamilton, Ohio, or near Hamilton, Ohio, um, a, a Chinese restaurant. It was a buffet. Um, they wanted, they let us in, but they wanted to put us in the back corner away from the bar and away from um, the other customers. And they straight up said the customers might complain about the dog. And I said, well, the dog is a service dog. You can't segregate me just because of her you know she's trained to leave food alone this was with luna too she's trained to leave food alone she's not going to be sniffing around she's not going to be going under other people's tables i guess they had had a dog in there previously that probably was not a service dog from the sound of it and it was going under tables and sniffing people and you know just walking around the restaurant and i'm like what the heck why would you let your dog do that in the first place if you're bringing a dog into a restaurant that shouldn't be there. So that was really the only other one. I mean, they let us in. They weren't telling us no. They were just trying to put us somewhere else. And I said, no, we're going to sit over here. And she finally was like, that's fine. So. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry you had a lady chase you through the store. That's crazy. <clears throat> so yeah phoebe graduated her program um you know we're still going to do reinforcement training and things like that like today um i hadn't asked her in quite a while i needed her to get my meds i was starting to feel anxious um so i did do that video a few weeks back about the um we hadn't really been working on it since i did the video and she was able to go over to the shelf, get the meds, and bring them to me. I wasn't very far away. I was sitting on the couch in the living room. But she was able to go get the meds and bring them to me. And I was I was just shocked that she still remembered that. Um, I have a lot of people telling me right now, because I have a doodle, as soon as she hits a year old next month, she's going to forget everything that she learned, and she's going to become a problem. Let me address that, guys. So I'm fully aware. I used to work at a vet. We had an abundance of doodles that would come in for baths and things like that. Um, grooming, whatever. Daycare, things like that. Yes, not all doodles have great personalities. Um, yes, a doodle is a mutt. I'm not debating that I don't have a purebred dog. Um, my first service dog is a mutt too. She's a American Staffordshire Terrier Husky mix with a tiny bit of Collie mix in there. So, 
I'm I'm fully aware of the the mutt issue. Oh, preserve the breed. Yes, I'm all for that. I am all for that. I went and looked at two different letters, so three total, before I decided on Phoebe's litter. I also took a trainer with me to evaluate the puppies. Uh, we I forget which test we followed um, or which test she followed. Um, but basically, you know, we did like loud noise things, rolling the puppy over on its back and it's not like flipping out and, um, you know, things like that. There were three puppies left in Phoebe's litter. Um, the other two, one was a male, one was a female. I had come to see the male. I wanted the male. Wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. Same with the other girl that was there. Wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. Phoebe was the only one that showed interest in myself and the trainer I took with me behavior trainer so she she passed the test um she was also uh reevaluated to see where she was at and what her temperament and stuff like that was like before she entered her program um i also did not rush her through anything uh we went at her pace she picked up things quickly um i'm getting crap for people telling me that a, a, a dog can't become a service dog in, in six months um, Phoebe started her training at 13 weeks old, not service dog training, but like her basics and things like that, you know, just stuff dogs should know. Um, and, and we went at her pace. I have a lot of that on, on video of her puppy stuff, um, back on my channel. So, you know, I didn't push her. We went at her pace. She picked up things quickly. When she entered her program, she was four months old and the owner of the program that evaluated her said that she was ahead of dogs her age. So she was head, ahead of other four-month-old puppies that she was currently working with. <clears throat> so we kind of got to skip ahead. She said that she was about 12 weeks ahead of other dogs her age. So um, we also, you know, took our time with task work. If she wasn't grasping something, you know, we would spend more time on that or try a different approach or things like that. So, hello, Service Canine Duo. Um, so, I'm fully aware of how, you know, doodle personalities are not always great. Phoebe is a fluke. I will, you know, say that she's a fluke. I got very lucky. I have said that time and time again. Hello. Hello, everybody who's just joining. Um, I am talking about how I'm, Phoebe graduated her program and people are giving me a hard time because she's a doodle and she finished her program in six months. Um, also, I will say that the program I went through does offer reinforcement training. So if we need to go back in for something, um, we can absolutely do that. Um, so uh, I'm just addressing, you know, those things I'm aware of. I just haven't fully explained, I guess, in posts and stuff like that, you know, when she started her pr program, um, when she started her training, you know, things like that. Like, in, I just, I don't know. I'm fully aware she's a doodle. I know she's a mutt. Um, I'm not trying to bash purebreds, you know, so don't bash my mutt. Um, you know, any dog can be a service dog. I fully believe any dog with the right temperament and the right training can be a service dog. You know, I'm not going to yell at you if you have a mutt. I'm not going to yell at you if you have a purebred dog. Phoebe has grown up side by side with a poodle, a full bred poodle. It's, it's her best friend. It's her best buddy. Promise. Promise is her best buddy. And by growing up, I mean, literally, they have grown up together. Um... The trainer I was working with in the beginning actually had promise when I got Phoebe. Um, Phoebe stayed with that trainer because of our house fire for the first, like, two weeks, I think. It was two weeks until we got into our Airbnb. And um, so she spent time with promise for those two weeks. And then um, promise, it was time for her to move on to her person. So... It ended up, my roommate ended up taking her. Um, so, <clears throat> at, they've known each other and been around each other since they were, you know, like, 
uh, about 13 weeks old. 11, 12, 12 weeks, about 12 weeks. Yeah, about 12 weeks. I got Phoebe when she was 12 weeks. So, <clears throat> it's like, I, I, I know how smart poodles are. I know how frustrating poodles can be. I look at, I see poodle treats in Phoebe, and I see Burmese treats in Phoebe. Um, Phoebe is very relaxed, I guess. She's not, she doesn't get super hyper. She's not really a jumper. She doesn't really jump up on people. Um, she's got a pretty placid, um, even as a puppy, she was pretty placid. You know, she didn't cry a lot, you know, things like that. She really literally is a fluke. Um, I, I got very lucky with her. So, you know, people attacking me for having a doodle and how the original breeder of the doodle hates the breed. It's not that he hates the breed. He just feels, you know, he bred it for a specific person, for someone who had an allergy. So he needed a hyperallergenic dog and he regrets doing it. That's fine. You know, I, I support purebreds, you know, but I'm not going to bash people for butts. Um, you know, also going into, you know, her training. Like I said, she started at 13 weeks old with basics. Picked up basics very quickly. Um, I also had, you know, four other dogs around her. Plus my roommate's dog. That's five. Five other dogs around her that helped her, you know, learn basic stuff. You know, I would, I would, in the beginning, I would train um, with Luna you know, reinforcement training with Luna, but it was new for Phoebe. Phoebe would see what Luna was doing and would pick it up. So I feel like that really helped too with that. Um, yeah, so let me let me look here and see if we have some questions. I see things popping up here, guys. Ask away if you'd like. <clears throat> okay, let's see. I am not feeding you. You have to wait. Hang on, guys. You have over an hour before you eat. That was Luna begging me for her dinner again. Yeah, dogs are dogs are different. I'll have her pick it up and bring it back to you and then tell her no. I'll do it. Phoebe, get it. Get it. Good girl, bring here. Thank you. No. This is a no. Okay? You leave it alone. No, it's not a toy. Socks. Sometimes I regret training retrieval because <laughs> she picks up things all the time. And what it is is she picks it up and takes it to you. She was going to take it to Rachel. She picks it up and takes it to you because she wants a treat. Um, whoever made the comment about their dog, um, starting young and still not fully trained, um, you know, a year and a half later and saying that every dog is different, works at a different pace. You are correct. Every dog is different and works at a different pace. Um, I have all of the task worked down that Luna or Luna, Phoebe needs to know. So... Otherwise, she wouldn't have graduated her program. So everything that I need, she does. I'm scrolling up through your comments, guys.
My roommates came back. Um, I'm gonna grab my charger off the porch real quick and probably move positions because my phone is gonna die. But um, hang tight, guys. I'll be right back in just a second, okay? I'm gonna mute this because my roommates are gonna come in. Okay, plug you guys in here. Now we're in business, I think. I think. Okay, just scrolling up through here. Leave it. Um, Alberta, for allergies, a lot of times they do scent training. So, um, they're probably working with some kind of scent. I actually, that's something I want to work on Phoebe independently is cortisol training. So she can detect when I'm feeling anxious. Um, I already, she can already do that with like my movements and stuff, but I'd like to, for her to be able to tell me before it gets to that point. Oh, that's so exciting. That's so exciting that, that um, you're getting a dog from an organization. That's so awesome. Try not to be too nervous. I mean, their, their organizations match pretty well. So I think the dog that they match you with is going to be great for you. Sorry, that took so long, guys. Ugh, see, that's the thing. It's so expensive. Like, the program that I went through is, like, really, um, really affordable. I mean, for six months, it, it was $2,400. So, um, but, you know, she, her program trainer was there through the whole process. Um, I also got to keep my dog with me so we could continue to bond and grow as a team or grow together. Um, that's what I liked about it was that the dog gets to stay with you. Um, she does do board and train as well, but I, um, 
I, I didn't want to, that, that's a little more costly and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to leave the dog with her. I didn't want to leave Phoebe with her. Not that like for any bad reason or anything, like I just wanted that bond to keep going. Yeah, Alberta. She's very, um, she's very hands-on with you, or she's as hands-on as you, you want her to be. So there were days where I'd say, yeah, you, you take her, you work with her, you know, the hour that we would meet or whatever, you, you take her, you work with her. And she would do that. Um, there were times where she was like, you're working with her today. Um, here's what we're doing. You know, let's get started type kind of thing. Um, and she would show me like step by step how to train something. Um, which is awesome. And in between lessons and things like that, if there was, if I had an issue with what I was teaching her, or if I had an issue with, you know, some behavior thing that was going on with her, and I'm like, I don't know why she's doing this, I could message her and be like, do you have any idea why she might be doing this or acting this way or something like that? And she would give me advice, like, hey, try, you know, try this way or do something like this, like reset her and then go back and try again, things like that. Oh, wow, that's really good. That's really cool that insurance pays for stuff like that and that the government is paying for your dog. That's amazing. Anybody have any other questions? I mean, I've got two of you or two or three of you are pretty active in here and then I've got like I've got seven people total. So, seriously guys, any questions you want to ask, go ahead. Um like I said, if it's not too personal, I will answer it. I have this stretched across the room. Is this in the right way? Charging. Hang on, guys. Yes, it is charging. There we go. Lurker's going to lurk. Yeah. I don't know what for. How did you teach Phoebe to bring meds to you? Stella doesn't like to carry things in her mouth. Phoebe did not like to carry things in her mouth either. So a lot of people, when I see people, I've, I saw someone recently post a video where they were trying to get their dog to pick up their inhaler and it just wasn't working. Um, <clears throat> they'd like put it in their mouth and they would drop it at like immediately. And I'm like, Look, you need to back up. <laughs> several steps. So what I would suggest would be getting like a dowel rod of some kind, either wooden or like plastic, something you can pick up at a hardware store that's about six to eight inches long. Um, and it's round and it's about, you know, this big around or so, quarter inch or something like that. So what you would do is then you would take that item Trying to see if I can find something. Uh, this is better, but I will show you with this. So you would take the item. You don't want to use an item this big when you're just starting out. So you would take the item, you know, let them check it out or whatever. Take your hand, place it behind their head here. Come here, baby. Sit. Sit. Good girl. So you can kind of see here. I'm kind of see put your hand behind their head say take see she opens her mouth automatically but you just want to hold it there until they open their mouth yes good girl and then mark with a yes so um by placing your head behind hand behind their head it's just placed there you're not forcing the item into their mouth your hand is just placed there so they can't push their head away and then you just put that there when they open their mouth as soon as they open their mouth and allow that in you mark yes and give a treat 
So that's how you, you want to start. You want to start like that because you want them to get used to having an object in their mouth. So you're not forcing that um, necessarily. Um, but what are you guys doing? Oh, goodness. <clears throat> but, you know, something like that. That's why we started with Phoebe. And eventually you move on from, from take um, to hold it. And you all, oh, let me show you how to do that. Phoebe, come here. Phoebe, come here. Come here. Come here. You drew. Sit. Now, this is big, so I don't know if she's going to be able to hold it. Hey. Hold. So then you want to put your hands on the top and the bottom. And slowly, you will remove it from the top, and you will just have your hand on the bottom and say, hold it. Now, she's holding this by herself because she already knows how to do this. Yep. Yep. Good girl. So the, the next step after that would be, you know, to... And it's just for a couple seconds. And then you slowly increase the time where you're kind of, and again, you're just kind of holding your hand. You're not clamping down on it. You're not pushing their 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 mouth down on it or anything like that. It's just enough for them to like brace it between their teeth. So it's very Fairly lightly. You're not, you know, put, using a lot of pressure or force or anything to make them hold that item. It's, it's just for, you would not do it as long as I did. She's just used to holding things now but um it would just be a couple of seconds and you would mark yes you know and then let them drop it here's a tip once you get to the point where they're holding it by themselves and you've removed your hands as soon as their nose starts to drop that means they're going to drop the item out of their mouth so you want right before they do that when you notice they're starting just barely starting you want to mark yes and then you know let them drop it and give them the treat without fail i will tell you guys as soon as they that nose drops or they start to drop their head they're going to drop that item <clears throat> how do you start training your dog to be off treats when in public um bella would you work for free i wouldn't work for free it's a handler preference whether or not you want your dog to be on treats or not I always have treats, usually, unless I'm running in somewhere quickly and Phoebe works fine without them. But I like to keep encouraging treats because it keeps them engaged. It keeps that bond with you. They look to you. They're going to pay more attention to you um, because they're also looking for that reward. So I, I don't and probably never would mean... Um, Luna did work for a period of time without treats, but she was more willing to work when she was getting paid. <laughs> Aren't we all? Oh, uh, let's see. How do you train your dog to start? Oh, I read that one. With the Ohio program, is it pay all at once or monthly payments? Um, Joyce, it is monthly payments. Um, a monthly payment. I paid $400 a month um for this for this program um like i said it's affordable six months is 2400 you can pay it all up front if you want um but you don't know how fast or how long it's going to take your dog to get through it so that's why i chose the monthly oh wow you showed me better than my trainer oh my gosh i'm so sorry <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Someone asked about, you know, starting, how do I start retrieve, retrieval of items, basically. And I just show that first you need to get your dog to take something into its mouth and how to do that. And then after the dog is willing to take things into your mouth, you know, without an issue, you just, by putting it there, they should open their mouth and take it. Then work on, you know, closing their mouth around it a little bit for a few seconds and things like that. <clears throat> I don't have any of my moderators in here. So... There we go. I use treats. She just doesn't get them constantly. Yeah, that's... 
seed, he gets treats. She just doesn't get them constantly. She gets them in abundance if she's learning something new. And then if it's something she already knows how to do, I still reinforce, like, yeah, you're doing this. You you get a treat. I want her to be off and on treats. I just want her to be okay if I forget treats at home. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Um, they, I mean, she should probably be fine if you forget treats on occasion. I mean, Luna was fine if I would forget treats. Um, she would still do her job. Phoebe still does her job if I forget treats. Yep. Man, I don't know who that person was, but I took care of them. Oh. I use low calorie treats. Um, I three calories per. Yeah, three calories per treat. They're crunchy. Um, actually, let me grab a bag of them. I'll show you guys. I recommend them. It's like giving your dog a bunch of Tic Tacs as rewards. Except Tic Tacs are one. Okay, so these are called Charlie Bear. Um, they have many different, I know, <laughs> everybody's over here because I give these to all of my dogs. So these are called Charlie Bears. Um, as you can see, it's only three calories per treat. So these are a low calorie treat. Um, they make them in several different flavors. I haven't even opened this bag yet, um, but they're crisp and crunchy. They say they're great for training. Um, this is These are made in the US by a family owned company. And again, it's less than three calories per treat. So for these particular ones, it's cheese and egg. The ingredients are um, cheese, egg product, salt, a little bit of garlic powder, brewer's yeast, and um, some preservative. So it's not like a natural thing, but... Actually, that's not bad at nope. all. It's not, but um, this is a 16 ounce bag and I have, I got four of these at once on Amazon for like 20, 25 or 26 with shipping. It was like 28. Yeah, and they last a while. I mean, this bag is full up to the top up here. So they don't skimp out on it. Should you go through like a basic training program at Pet Smart Class first before joining a service dog program? Girls, enough. Enough. Down. Listen, guys. My dogs are not fighting. They're playing. My dogs are very mouthy when they play, so they sound like vicious, but they're not. I mean, I have five dogs and they all get along fine. <laughs> um, to answer your question, Joyce, should you go through a basic training program like PetSmart class first before joining a service dog program? Um, that's 100% up to you. Um, I will say that PetSmart, I know, is all positive reinforcement training, which is awesome. Um, I'm not downing positive reinforcement training. It just really depends on your dog and what your dog needs. Um, some dogs need a balance of positive and negative, which is what I have usually used between both of my service dogs. Phoebe, though, she did get mostly positive because she's a sensitive bean. Um, it doesn't take much of a correction. A lot, usually a verbal correction is enough for her. So um, I didn't really have to use any negative. The only negative, the only time I had to use a negative was when um, we were working on recall. Did you ever get to no. The soup you need to Um, I don't know. Well, you feed her out there all the time, so... Oh, Phoebe, I thought you said Suki. Oh, Phoebe. Oh, uh, no, she doesn't. She has food out there. <clears throat> so that's that's really kind of up to you. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not not going to recommend them, but I, I need people to understand that 
that PetSmart is is basic training. That's it. You have your basic, you know, starter, and then you have your advanced basics, and you know, whatever. Um, that doesn't make your dog a service dog, um, but it doesn't take away the knowledge of you know them learning basics. If you need some guidance through your basics and stuff like that, um, it's never a bad idea to do a basic training class. No, it's not. It's never. It's never. <clears throat> Yes. Yes, I was just getting ready to say that. Um, you know, you, you, like my wife said, you will learn. You know, is your dog praise motivated? Is your dog treat motivated? Is your dog toy motivated? You know, things like that. So it's a it's a good thing to have. Um, so it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just something that is completely up to you. Um, I taught Phoebe all her basics and stuff myself. Um, with the knowledge I had from when I trained Luna because I 100% trained Luna on my own with the help of some of my other service dog handler friends and I did have a close friend who was a trainer who would also work with her um, with certain things. Um, I t Alberta, I took care of that guy. Um, that's a question to ask the program, Joyce. Um, if you're talking about the one that I used here in Ohio, yes, um, she will start at the very beginning for you. This is why Phoebe was ahead of other dogs her age was because I had already taught her this stuff. So she will work through basics with you, um, you know, sit, stay down, all that stuff, and then move on to the more, you know, starting task work. Or so. Well, really, she does like the basic sit down, stay, and then there's a way to work yourself around the dog in a stay position, both sitting and laying down. I actually have a video on it um, to get the dog to stay. Um, and then you go on to like leash manners and things like that. And then you would work into, you know, your task work once all of that is solid. Um, she really wants that stuff to be solid first. <clears throat> Yeah, Alberta, when people pop in like that, I just I just ignore them. You know, I usually, you know, mute them or whatever. <clears throat> Hi, Alex. Welcome back. Is rollover a good training treat? I cut the pieces. And, um, I don't know what rollover is. Um, a lot of people break their treats down like this, for example. You can break these into pieces. They're crunchy. So I might break them in half or something. Hello. I hate my dogs. They're giving me the sad puppy dog eyes. But these, these can be broken into pieces so like a half a piece or something like that yes everybody everybody will get one here luna Lovey. Peavy. there you go waver i don't know where karma left you guys want to see all my dogs Minus one. This is Rosie. She is a pit bull. We're not sure what kind of she's. She's not Staffordshire, um, but she's. I think she's an American pit bull. And then you guys know Luna. She's a pitski. Phoebe. River, river. There he is. And that is my my Chihuahua, my only male dog. Um, he is a chocolate merle, um, and he is short-haired, yes. I don't know how he came about. I just adopted him about se six, almost seven years ago. Oh, yeah. And Luna was a rescue. Um, we say that she is a bully breed mix because we don't know. We haven't had her DNA tested. Um, she's very... 
placid. Loves to fence race, though. His friendly. Oh no, he holds his leg up all the time. Um, he's been checked multiple times at the vet for that. He, it's just him. He's a nervous ball. See, he's fine. He always holds his leg like that. He's always done that. He always has one leg up when he's standing. And the vet has found nothing wrong with him. He's just... He's just like that. So, I don't know. He just does it. Yeah, I don't know what kind of pit bull she is. She's... She, I usually just say she's a bully bean mix. I know she's not a Staffordshire... Um, she doesn't have the body tape. She's not short enough. She's taller. So that's why I want to say she's an American Pit Bull Terrier, um, though she would be on the smaller side. So I'm kind of wondering if she's not half Staffordshire, half um, American Pit Bull Terrier, which would compensate for her height and her body type. Oh, well, that's sad, Alberta. I don't know why. I mean, you know, like um, German Shepherds with the right temperament, they can be great service dogs, uh, Rottweilers. Uh, I see pit bull service dogs or bully breed mix service dogs all the time. You know, if they just have to have the right temperament. I know there. I know there's not a kind of pit bull it's it's a breed okay there's there's staffordshire pit bull terrier american pit bull terrier um that have these standards and their breed standards she is a bully breed mix because we i don't know what time she type she is i haven't had her genetically tested like i've had luna genetically tested we had luna genetically tested Last year, the year before, year before, and Luna came back Staffordshire Pitbull, or was it American Staffordshire Terrier, Siberian Husky, and Collie mix. So uh, we, we want to get Rosie tested because we want to know what type of or what breed of Pitbull type dog she is or what mix she is, um, but we don't know. So we just call her a bully breed mix. Yes, yes, yes that's what I mean. Amer and staff, yeah, American staff Shire. My brain isn't always, you know, on it, guys. I brain fog all the time. Yes, Alberta, I did do a video on Luna's test results for her genetic testing. Yeah, Luna's Amstaff, uh, Siberian Husky Collie mix. <laughs> Phoebe, it's downstairs. It's for the TV. Come here. Sit. Sit. Focus. Yes, good focus. Good girl. And that is how I usually get her to stop barking at nothing. Because I call her over, make her sit, and focus on me so she's not, you know, barking. Here, you can have another one. You can have another one. Yeah, you, you can have another one too. Yeah, her focus is pretty solid. Yes, they are spoiled. But again, you know, low calorie treats. <clears throat> Any other questions, guys? I have dinner waiting for me, so.
The only dog I didn't show you guys was um, Karma. She's my oldest dog. She's 11 years old. And uh, she's this tiny little, I mean, she's like these socks big. With a head. Um, she's this tiny little chocolate chihuahua. You'd love to see more training videos. Prefer the way you explain it. Okay. Um, I will try and back up and do a video sh indicating how to do a hold or to start um, the hold for the retriever. What? You can tell me. Yeah. You're not getting any more of those. No, you're not. Here I was thinking you were alerting to my blood sugar. Nope. You're so spoiled. Since Luna's retired. That's what she does. Okay, this was sitting over here, and she gets up on me, and she's doing all that, that, and then you see her look over at that. She she can tell. She She's smart. But since retirement, she's just... She's a handful. I'm okay. I had um, a cup of coffee that had some sugar in it a little bit earlier, so I'm, I'm okay. But any other questions, guys? Like, I'm going to say I'll go for about another three minutes because then I will have been on here for an hour and I'm going to cut it after that. Any questions at all? Questions about Luna, questions about Phoebe, questions about me, questions about Rachel, questions about my roommates or their dogs. What? I'm not giving you any more. Hello, sweet baby. Yeah, you're looking over at the treats. That's what you want. No. No. I'm not giving you any more treats. You had your dinner. And you have three. You don't need any more. You don't need any more. No. Okay, off. <clears throat> How old is Luna now? Luna is, we're not sure. So she's, she's either four or five years old. Um... We're leaning more towards five, um, just based off of how her teeth are looking, um, and, you know, her fur in general, like, she's getting gray. Um, and my roommate's dog, Keeper, we know that, that she is five years old, so they have a lot of similarities as far as condition of teeth and things like that. Ah, uh off! -uh. Oh. No. No. Um, why did I retire, Luna? So, Luna, about a year, okay, let me back up. So, two years ago, we went to the fair. Luna had been working for, I'm not really sure how long she had been working at that point, uh, but a while, and we went to the fair, uh, the state fair, and we were there almost all day. We took plenty of breaks. She got water breaks. She got her, um, she had breakfast before we left. She got, um, a snack, like lunch while we were there. Plenty of water, things like that. This is in the middle of July, so it gets hot. Um, we spent a lot of time indoors too, because I don't handle the heat very well, but we decided to, we were slowly working our way back through the fair. So the back half of the fair is games and rides. So we decided to go back that way and we weren't going to ride anything or whatever. We were just checking out some games and see if we were going to play some games. And we were by the, I didn't realize where we were because we came around the back side of it and we were on the side of it. And it was the dart throwing where you throw uh, darts to pop the balloons. And whoever was doing it was really good because they were just boop, boop, pop, 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 pop. 
and she got so freaked out. I mean, aside from all of the noises that you hear from the different games, the bells, you know, things like that, for some reason, that freaked her out in that moment. I don't know what happened. She just started freaking out for some reason. It was very unlike her, um, but I'm pretty sure it had to do with that popping. Um, and she was fine with fireworks as well up to that point. Um, so I don't know what happened, but I do know earlier in the day, um, I had one of those cooling towels that you get wet and then you wring it out and you snap it. Um, she was behind me in a downstay and she got up to reposition herself and I didn't know that she had gotten up. You know, I was in my wheelchair, so she came around to the side and I went to go snap it and it accidentally hit her like on the back of the neck. It wasn't hard or anything like that. It was just a quick little, and it was a complete accident. Um, but it made that snap sound, too. So, um, whatever happened, it was my fault. I blame myself. I mean, she was fine the rest of the day, but anytime I would go to wring the towel out or snap it, I would make sure she was out of the way. But she would kind of, you know, lean away or, you know, back up a little bit if she noticed I was doing it. She wasn't, like, freaking out or anything. So I feel like that on top of, you know, just being right there next to that balloon thing for some reason... Um, after that, she became fairly skittish around popping noises, um, you know, or anything like that. And it, it was just weird. And I would try to work her through those things. I actually got in touch with um, one of my friends who was a trainer and was like, hey, I need help with this. You know, what should I do? I tried playing desensitizing noise to her and it would just stress her out more. Um, and so I noticed a decline in her work ethic. Um, she wasn't wanting to go out and work as much. Um, I would get her vest and she would put her head all the way to the ground instead of putting her head through, she would put her head all the way down. She didn't want to do it. So I slowly then started not, on days that she didn't want to work, I would reschedule. If it was an appointment, I would reschedule it or I wouldn't go, I would cancel because I wasn't gonna force her to work if she didn't want to. So over that year period, you know, it's things, as much as we tried to work through it and things like that, she was just getting worse. So she was a early retirement. Um, she did kind of work into retirement. If we were going somewhere where, you know, like in a, a doctor's appointment where it's gonna be quiet, there's not gonna be a lot of startling noises, things like that, you know, we would go to that. Um, if we were going to a friend's house where it was going to be relaxed, you know, things like that, she would come with me. Um, <clears throat> but as far as, you know, going out into, say, like, you know, a store or something like that, I usually wouldn't take her. Um, so I would have to take, um, I would, I would have to go with my wife, and my wife was like my service human. I don't like saying that because that's just kind of rude, but it was, you know, if I have an issue, she's going to be there for me. Um, so <clears throat> over a, peer, a year period, I noticed, and it was a hard decision, guys. It's always a hard decision. So we tried a number of things. I tried to work her through it. I tried to, you know, like I said, get with a trainer and help her desensitize to these things. We tried a number of things and nothing worked. So I knew I needed to start looking for a prospect. So, um... It was about six months from the point I knew I needed to retire Luna um, until I got Phoebe. Um, I was researching breeds and things like that. I decided on a poodle originally and um, then did some research on the Bernadoodle breed. Um, I had met several Bernadoodles and they get pretty large and I'm like, I need a larger dog. Luna is only 45 pounds. She's not very tall. She's like 22 or 23 inches tall. Phoebe is like 20, 26, I think, last time I measured her at the at the shoulder. She's like 26 inches tall. Um, her girth is 28. She's like 70 pounds. She's she's big dog. <clears throat> and I need something I need some I needed something bigger for um, grounding color and uh, grounding, forward momentum, and counterbalance. So no downward pressure will be used on Phoebe. She's just not big enough. Um, also, I'm not really doing any of that stuff right now because she still needs to be cleared by the vet. I mean, the only thing I really do with her is grounding, um, which doesn't require any pressure at all. I mean, you just have on a strap or on a 
rigid handle, you just set your hand there and you just feel the momentum of the dog moving. So your hand is just resting on top of that. It's not, it's a very nice sensation to me. Um, it's very calming. So <clears throat> that's all that's happening. But that's what happened with Luna. Um, we believe, I'm pretty sure that's what ended up happening. And um, yeah, you know, I did not want to retire or early watch her, but that's what needed to happen. Are there any breeds you personally don't like? Nope. I pretty much like all dogs. Um, do I stay away from some breeds? Sure. Um, and that's usually if they're telling me, if the dog's telling me, like, leave me alone. Um, but I'm not really afraid of any particular breed or any breed, like, I really don't like. After working at a vet, you just kind of deal with it. Yes, Albert. She does. Um, Luna does still alert in home, and she does still respond to things in home. Um, you know, there. But there are days where she's not gonna do it, and I have, I have Phoebe for that. Um, otherwise, both of them are usually doing it at the same time, which is which is kind of cool. Hi. I'm not giving you any more treats. I'm no. I'm not you any more treats this is not going to get you a treat look you're looking over there fat off please off thank you what are the best breeds you've seen as service dogs um poodles um, golden retrievers. Uh, I've seen some really good labs. Um, it, it really just depends on the dog's personality. And this is why I feel like temperament testing when you go to find your puppy is so important um, to have the puppy temperament tested. You know, if you can see a litter before they're ready to go home, um, I would start temperament testing dogs as early as four weeks. Um, some people, some breeders, if they're breeding for service work, start at two weeks. They do two, four, six, and eight weeks before the dog leaves the home. Um, some breeders keep their dogs up to 12 weeks when they're 100% independent and don't need mom for anything. Um, but the longer, the longer the dog is with mom, the better. So, because the mom can teach them a lot. So I took Phoebe at 12 weeks and she was with her mom up until then. Um, her siblings, other siblings did go home starting at eight weeks, but um, she, she stayed until 12 weeks. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the, the, the best service dogs that I've come across that I've, you know, as far as hanging out with people and I've never you know, known the dog to have an issue or anything like that, um, was a golden retriever, a poodle, um, and a lap. So, um, but again, any dog can be a service dog with the right temperament. Like I said, that's why temperament testing is important. Um, if your dog is going to go into a program, I definitely recommend the program also temperament testing the dog as well as just kind of seeing where the dog is at as far as it's learning and how its brain works and things like that. That's another thing I really loved about my program. My She helped me understand how Phoebe's brain works. So it, I was better able to bond with her. And that's Phoebe barking. I do allow her to bark at home, guys. Um, you know, she's the dog. She's just being a dog right now. They're all being dogs right now.
Did I unmute? I did. Okay. Sorry, I had to quiet the down. <clears throat> yeah, CB barked in best one time so far, um, and it was another dog that barked, and it, she was actually going through her teenage phase. Um, so we were really trying to work through some stubbornness, um, and that was the only time she barked. I corrected her, um, and she hasn't done it since. Oh my goodness, yeah. Barking is an issue in public. Okay guys, I am actually going to go ahead and get off of here now, um, and eat my dinner. Um, thanks so much for hanging out. You guys asked a lot of great questions. I hopefully will do a live in the future. I will work on trying to get some training videos out. Um, it's really just kind of a matter of what and how to do it. So take care guys. Uh, we'll see you soon and thanks for hanging out.